Hello, and we welcome you to this year's observance of Ash Wednesday. Due to the global pandemic, we're forced to do worship in a way that we never could have seen, but it also provides us a rare opportunity, something that you may find interesting, and that's how I prepare the ashes that will be imposed upon the people's heads on Ash Wednesday observances. Now, I will tell you that I looked a great deal for the source of what I do, but this was actually taught to me by a pastor much senior than myself, and I couldn't find anything other than the written notes that I took when he shared this with me. So, but each segment of, of the creation of the ashes has an important element that goes with it. So we begin by taking the previous year's palms uh, that you see strewn on the counter before you. And these palms are very brittle and catch fire very easily. And they go into a fire pit where they are ignited. But prior to igniting the palms, I say a prayer very similar to this. Gracious Lord, even as these palms were used to herald the entrance of your son into the holy city of Jerusalem, and invigorated all who held them with the possibilities of new life with him. As they have been part of creation and of this frail world, just like we are, they become brittle and begin to die and to fade. Accept the burning of these ashes, Lord, as a fragrance that is an, it makes an aroma pleasing to your sight, that they would be used, Lord, to remind us all of the frailty of our human life and that they would serve as an ever reminder that to dust we have been made and to dust we shall go. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Now after about six hours of allowing the palms to smolder in the fire pit, they, they, they get burnt very much and then I put them into a sifter and this, this literally was about 75% of the palms that we used in the UPG last year. And they become a very fine grain. And I put those into the ceramic bowl that will be used on Ash Wednesday. The next ingredient to our ashes is olive oil to remind us of the land in which Jesus traveled as olive oil was a spice that was used quite often in the land of Israel and ancient Jerusalem. We also put some uh, frankincense gum, which reminds us, of course, of the gifts that, that the wise men brought to the child Jesus, uh, but frankincense and myrrh were used as spices that were helped use to anoint the dead. And the myrrh frankincense. And then we just stir it all up until it forms a paste. And the paste then, we do add one other in, uh, small ingredient, and that's actually sh Dawn dish soap, which allows this to come off of your heads in a little bit easier fashion. As you can see, the more you stir the, the um, oil into it, the thinner it becomes. And eventually, it becomes almost like a paste. And then these elements will be used on Ash Wednesday observances and prayed over by Pastor Suzanne or myself prior to them being having them imposed upon their foreheads. So I hope this little insight is helpful to all of you, and may you have a blessed Ash Wednesday and Lenten season. We welcome you back to our Ash Wednesday worship from St. John's Windish Lutheran Church in Bethlehem. 
Again, I'm Pastor Jerry Culp, the pastor of the United Proclamation of the Gospel Parish, and I'll be serving as today's assisting minister as Pastor Suzanne Trump of St. John's Windisch Lutheran Church serves as our presiding minister. Before we continue our worship, we did want to take a moment to say a word of thanks to Rich Hawk, our live stream ministry coordinator, Kenda Riley, our ministry coordinator, but most of all, whatever time of day or night it is that you're joining us for this holy time, we wanted to thank you for being with us. Lent begins with a solemn call to fasting and repentance as we begin our journey to the baptismal waters of Easter. As we hear in today's readings, now is the acceptable time to return to the Lord. During Lent, the people of God will reflect on the meaning of their baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. The sign of ashes suggests our human mortality and frailty. What seems like an ending is really an invitation to make each day a new beginning in which we are washed in God's mercy and forgiveness. With the cross on our brow, we long for the spiritual renew that flows from the springtime Easter feast to come. And now, let us pray. God of all grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill each one of us now with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in both spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As disciples of Jesus, you and I are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll speak Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed. You delight in truth deep within me, and would have known wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me 
with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Led now by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us now pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, you gather your people in solemn assembly. Grant us grace to observe a holy Lent through fasting prayers and works of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. You give generously to all your creatures, Provide for all animals whose winter rations are dwindling and prepare the earth for renewal in coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. You move your people to cry out for justice. Reveal all the ways in which we oppress others. Turn us from our complacency and move us to work on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. You lift up the poor, care for all who know poverty, of any kind of daily needs, of spirit, of health. Pour your abundant mercy upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. You turn people from their sin to live for you alone. Renew each one of us in the covenant of baptism, that we might live in hope of a creation that is reconciled and restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. As we remember saints who have gone before us, guide us in our journey and open our lives to the cleansing and renewing power of your abundant forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We now share the prayer that our Lord Lord taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time, I have listened to you. 
and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I was um, looking at this passage from Corinthians and thinking about, you know, um, all that we've been through in the last year and you know um, it was what two or three weeks into Lent last year that we went into the pandemic and um, so things really have not been at all normal since then and yet we have this beautiful reading um, from um, Paul's letter to the Corinthians and saying that now is the day now is the day and I pondered and wondered what that might mean. And um, there's actually an Ash Wednesday poem from T.S. Eliot. And he wrote this on his conversion when he finally and firmly declared himself to the Anglican Church and was baptized and confirmed in 1928. It's a rather long um, poem, but I want to read to you part of it. Because I do not hope to turn again, because I do not hope, because I do not hope to turn, desiring this man's gift and that man's scope, I no longer strive to strive towards such things. Why should the aged eagle stretch its wings? Why should I mourn the vanished power of the usual rain? Because I do not hope to know again the infirm glory of the positive hour. Because I do not think. Because I know I shall not know the one veritable transitory power, because I cannot drink. There where the trees flower and springs flow, for there is nothing again, because I know that time is always time, and place is always an only place, and what is actual is actual only for one time, and only for one place. I rejoice that things are as they are, and I renounce the blessed face, and renounce the voice, because I cannot hope to turn again. And pray to God to have mercy upon us, and pray that I may not forget these matters that with myself I too much discuss too much explain, because I do not hope to turn again. Let these words answer for what is done not to be done again. May the judgment not be too heavy upon us. Because these wings are no longer wings to fly, 
but merely vans to beat the air, the air which is now thoroughly small and dry, smaller and drier than the will. Teach us to care and not to care. Teach us to sit still. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Where shall the word be found? Where will the word resound? Not here, there is not enough silence. Not on the sea or on the islands, not on the mainland or in the desert or in the rainland. For those who walk in darkness, both in the day and time and in the night time, the right time and the right place are not here. No place of grace for those who avoid the face. No time to rejoice for those who walk among noise and deny the voice. Will the veiled sister pray for those who walk in darkness, who chose thee and oppose thee, those who are torn in the horn between season and season, time and time, between hour and hour, word and word, power and power, those who wait in darkness? Will the veiled sister pray for the children at the gate, who will not go away and cannot pray for pray for those who choose and oppose O my people what have i done unto thee will the veiled sister between the slender yew trees pray for those who offend her and are terrified and cannot surrender and affirm before the world and deny between the rocks in that last desert before the last blue rocks the desert in the garden the garden in the desert of drought spitting from the mouth of the withered apple seed O oh, my people it strikes me as he writes this as he is converting to Christianity that sense of before and that sense of after that sense of having turned and not wanting to turn again that sense of silent and that lack of silence for those in darkness for those who both choose and oppose what will you pray for this Lent? What is God calling to you this Lent? As we turn and we turn inward and reflect on the blessings that God has given to us, as we reflect on what our call as Christians is, as we take this time, this time that for many has been difficult, for many has been silent, and move inward to hear the still, small voice of God. Amen. Amen. And now, my sisters and brothers in Christ, today with the whole church, you and I are to enter into a time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death into life and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for true repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another and to live in harmony with all of creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we may not fully enjoy the life our Creator intended. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another.
Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our own fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh, oh God. God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O God. God. our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we now confess to you. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O God. God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O God. God. Our negligence in prayer and in worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O God. God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O God. God. Our false judgments and our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us, us O oh God. God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear, Hear us, O God, God, for, for your, your mercy is great. great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior 
and Lord. Amen. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and the passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Amen. A reminder that Pastor Jerry and myself will be in the parking lot of St. John's Windisch Lutheran Church, located at 617 East 4th Street in South Bethlehem, for imposition of ashes. We will be present three times. The first, 7 a.m. to 8 then noon to one, and finally from five to six. When you arrive in the parking lot, please pull forward to the pastors. Please stay in your car with your mask on and roll down your windows. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we go forth into the world to serve God with gladness, be of good cheer, hold fast to that which is good, rent to no, no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve our God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.